Today is the long-awaited video. Today's video is about... Just one second, I'll be right back. Today's video is about pitching. Needed the paper to do this. Today's video is about pitching. It's about pitching as a travel photographer or really a photographer of any sort or a travel writer. Hell, to be honest, this video is about pitching in general. Now, before I get into pitching in general, I wanna do a little bit of, a little bit of bitching. Now, maybe not so much bitching, but hard truth. And this is the hard truth, people. You should not be pitching photography as a business if your skills aren't there yet. It blows me away a little bit that photographers who just pull the camera right out of their bag, have read one book on it, think that they can sell their skills to different people, different businesses, whoever. Photography is a trade. It's not an art. And even if it were an art, you don't learn art just magically. It doesn't just spring out of nowhere and, and you do it. Photography is a trade like carpentry and like welding. And you as a consumer on the other end of the business would never hire a carpenter who didn't know how to carpet properly. Now, that's not to say that photography doesn't have art aspects of it. Of course, it's an art. You create beautiful things. Just like a carpenter can make really sturdy, ugly looking cabinets or they can make beautiful cabinets. But if the cabinet doesn't stand up and if it doesn't hold books, it doesn't matter. So you as a photographer or a writer or whatever your trade is, need to put the time and effort into learning the trade before you can sell it to people. And if you try to pitch before you're ready to make money from your business, you've already failed. And not only that, you're probably gonna do harm to your future business. So do yourself a favor. As a photographer, don't start pitching until you're confident in your skills. Hard truth number two comes to those skills. And that is as a photographer, and I think as an artist in general, we're so used to people giving us positive reinforcement. We all think we're awesome, but guess what? We don't, we all suck. If you can't read my writing, I'm sorry. It's, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not an artist, I'm a tradesperson, you see? We all suck, we all kind of suck, at least when we start. We're not as good as we think we are. And because of all the positive reinforcement we get from our friends and from our family, we get it in our heads that we're amazing. All of your friends and family are gonna tell you you're amazing. They do, that's how they do it. Look, I drew a picture of it so it must be true. Everybody, you, your photography. Go on to Instagram, for example and look at any photographer's work. There's a thousand comments, they're all, wow, you're amazing. There's very few that are like, hey dude, it's a bit noisy. Hey man, it's not sharp enough. You need to find people in your life that are willing to give you constructive criticism. Not criticism, constructive criticism. That way, we all suck until we don't. We'll all get there eventually and it's not a bad thing to think you suck. It means you have the chance to improve and it means that you're already being critical of yourself, which is good. Now, I'm done with the bitching, let's get into the pitching. And at the end of the day, there is no right way to pitch people, but there are a lot of bad ways to pitch people. So these are some of the things that you should avoid when pitching. The first is bad comma grammar. Bad grammar, bad Kelsey grammar. Bad grammar will kill a pitch right away. And the reason it kills a pitch right away is because whoever's reading that pitch will think it's sloppy and messy and think that your work is gonna be sloppy and messy as well. It has nothing to do with the fact that it was a typo. Typos happen. It has to do with the fact that you didn't spot the typo and that if you weren't willing to put that attention to de detail into the pitch, you probably won't be willing to put that attention to detail into your work either. Now, I have an interesting situation when it comes to this in that I've been on both sides of things. I used to own a travel magazine. I received thousands and thousands of pitches. And now I'm on the side of things where I'm sending pitches and it makes it a little bit easier for me. And I think it gives me grounds to explain things a little bit better. 
At my magazine, I received so many pitches that were sloppy and they were bad. And the people that were sending those pitches were fantastic and talented and they were geniuses, some of them. But I had no trust for them because I knew that if they were sending a pitch in that was that sloppy, that their work might not be sloppy, but it might not come at all because they really don't put the time and effort into things. Now, I would get pitches from people that weren't nearly as talented, but they were reliable, and I knew they were gonna be reliable because they used proper grammar, and because they read over their pitches when they were done with them, and that they corrected things, and that they were organized, and I knew that if they were that organized in their pitch, they'd be that organized in delivering me their product at the end of the day as well. Next thing you can do wrong. I feel like this video is really negative so far, you know me, I'm really positive, but I'm sorry, I'm being negative, but it'll get positive later on, I promise. What is the next one? Oh yeah, the second thing you can't do wrong is you have to have brand awareness. You have to prove to whoever is reading your pitch that you know about them, that you understand them. So in this little diagram I drew, this dude saying, oh, I love McDonald's, it's my favorite health food right now. I love the McHale sandwich. I love the McHale sandwich. Everybody loves the McHale sandwich. You need to know the brand and you need to prove that you know the brand and you need to prove you know what the brand's gonna want. Those are really important things. If you don't show that you care about the brand, they're gonna think that this was just a random pitch that was sent to a thousand different people, kind of like a shot in the dark. You have to prove to the brand that you care about them you have to prove to the brand that you understand them and you have to prove to the brand that what you do is going to help their brand and their brand's image because the number one most important thing to the brand is their image and you as a professional have to try to amplify that. So if you prove you don't understand the brand, they're never ever going to hire you. Next thing you can do wrong. <laughs> what is this? Oh yeah, your pitch can't be too, too long. You can't have long pitches. This pitch says, you, you can read what that pitch says. This pitch is really long and boring. I'll be honest with you again. When I had my magazine, if I got a pitch that was really long, I wouldn't even read it. I'd be like, okay, this is more than six paragraphs. I'm just throwing it in the trash. I don't have the time for that. And you gotta understand the position of magazines and newspaper editors. You gotta understand the point of view of PR people and brand and the brand people that are putting together campaigns, they get a lot of pitches, thousands of them, and they don't have a lot of time. So you want to be short, you want to be to the point, and you want to be concise. As soon as you start writing way too much, as soon as you start giving them your life story and you tell them, I grew up a small boy in a small town in Canada, and I was dreaming of bigger things out in the world. Those things might be exciting to your grandpa, but to a brand manager, they're not, they're not exciting at all. So keep things to the point. Don't be too long. Next thing you can't, you can't do wrong. Next thing you shouldn't do wrong. Next thing is too short, not enough information. And you have to be to the point, but at the same time you have to prove to them who you are and what you can offer them. So this says, hey fam, I'm like totally a photographer. Can you give me some money? And you, you're, you might be laughing on that end of things. When I ran my travel photography magazine, I got this email like a dozen times. And there was times I would get incredibly talented photographers send me emails. They were just shot in the dark emails that said, hey, Brendan, I'm a photographer. Or hey, Sir Madam, I'm a photographer. This is a link to my portfolio. And out of curiosity, I jumped to the portfolio and sometimes the images were just mind-blowingly good. But they had no idea how they could work with me. And they didn't even take the time to look through my contributor guidelines on my magazine to see how they could contribute to the magazine. And if they would have looked there, they would have found out that I was paying photographers and I was looking for photographers that were as skilled as them. But they had no clue. The final thing you cannot do in a pitch is not show any credibility. So this page says, so I really, I'm really good, I promise. Oh, prove it? Sure, let me prove it. It'll cost you money in a retainer. Promise it'll be good, yo. That's basically what it says. I didn't actually read what it says. But again, you'd be surprised how often I would get these emails. You have to prove your credibility in your pitch. 
even if that's in the shortest form, like linking people to a different project you had or linking people to your portfolio or a set of images or giving them a spreadsheet of the results of one of your past campaigns, something like that, anything to prove that you're credible and that you can deliver what you say you can deliver. If I'm a magazine, if I'm the Toronto Star who I've worked for quite a bit in the past, if I'm the Toronto Star and I'm looking for a travel writer or a travel photographer, I'm not gonna look at an email that says, hey, I'm pitching this story um, on uh, Ethiopia. It'll be good, I promise. That's, that might be good, but I can, you got to prove it to me. I need to see that that pitch says, I'm a travel photographer. I'm in Ethiopia right now. Here's a link to 20 of the images I took on the trip. And here's a couple links to past articles I did for the Globe and Mail or New York Times or anybody, even if it's your local paper, just somebody to prove that you can deliver what you say you're going to deliver. So those are all the things that you cannot do in your pitch or you should avoid in your pitch. Now let's talk about actually constructing the pitch. And I want to talk about three things, three theories, I guess they would be from Socrates, which are ethos, pathos, and logos. Now these aren't Socrates philosophies or hypocrisies. Can't define will I be dropping these lyrically performed armed robberies. These are methods of appeal. Let's start with ethos. Ethos. Ethos is ethical appeal. Essentially, it's your credibility. It's an appeal to the brand using your credibility. Is pathos. Pathos. Pathos is a pathetic. <laughs> I said that really funny. It's a pathetic appeal. A pathetic appeal means an appeal to their emotion to their emotional side. Now, what does that mean? That doesn't mean that you're trying to make them feel bad. You're not like the skinny dude that's like, yo, I'm a, I'm a starving artist, feed me. And the big fat brand guy's like, mwah ha ha, corporate greed made me fat. That, that's not what I mean. What I mean by emotional appeal is by proving that you and the brand are one in the same, that you complement each other, that you should be working together because you're family, yo. And the third appeal is logos. Logos is the appeal to the logical side of things. Essentially, you're saying, hey guys, this is why it's gonna work. You're saying, that's all I've gotta say about that in the Forrest Gump voice. And the brand's going, that totally makes sense. That's why this is gonna work for both of us. That's why we're gonna be successful. I like that, it's logical. That's ethos, pathos, and logos, and your pitch should have all of that. So now that you know your methods of appeal, involve them into your pitch. So let's structure that pitch right now. This is really awkward because I have no idea if this is showing up or if it, I, I, I'm just wishing for luck that this all works. This is essentially what your pitch should look like. And it shouldn't be too long, it shouldn't be too short, it should be concise. And on top of it, I just had an idea. If you click on the link in my description, it's gonna take you to a template or two pitch templates in one Word doc that'll basically outline what your pitch should look like for you to send to clients. But let me run through it quickly here. This is what your pitch should look like. It should be an intro, 50 words, no more than 50 words. And it should be 100% ethos. It should be, my name's Brendan. I'm a travel photographer from Canada. My work has been seen in The Guardian, Tr Toronto Star, etc., etc. Then you should have a project description. Your project description should be no more than 100 words, but that really depends on the project and it depends on your relationship with the potential client. For example, if your relationship with them is brand new, it should just be to the point. It should include pathos. And now, how do you include pathos in that? That's the tricky part. How do you get emotional appeal into your description of your project? You're describing your project, but the way you get that emotional appeal into that is by proving that you and the brand are somehow connected, that you and the brand are one and the same, that you and the brand can work together to take over the world, and that you love and appreciate the brand, and that the brand loves and appreciates you in return, or could. So your project description somehow should try to involve that and it should also hit them with the ethos. 
So to hit them with the ethos, send them links to different projects you've done in the past that are similar. It gives you the credibility. Or if you don't have any similar projects in the past, give them some sort of excerpt or examples. Again, just ethos like crazy up in here. Those examples can come in the form of a portfolio with a couple images, or if you're doing travel writing, it can be an excerpt from the potential article, like 50 words uh, from the story that you wanna write for the, for the newspaper or whatever. So that's how you hit them with the ethos in your project description. You move down here and you got the costs. Now the costs are gonna hurt the brand. When the brand sees the cost, it's gonna start losing attention. So you wanna keep the costs as brief as possible. Don't give a big long description. Just give them the cost. And one of the worst things you can do in cost is trying to use pathos. As soon as you try to use pathos in the cost, it makes you seem weak and like you're begging for money. So don't do that. Just hit them with the cost and be done with it. Let them move on to the next section, which is logos. And the logos is gonna be your outro, the logic. Working together is logical. Both of us benefit. I get a job and you guys get brand awareness. You get some good photos or video or you get your article and that's amazing. And then thank you. Don't forget to thank people. I'm blown away by how many people leave an email without saying thanks for taking the time to read this pitch. Thank you. Also include your contact information, which is helpful at the very end as well. Now, obviously a pitch is going to be different for every single client. If you're pitching a newspaper or a, a magazine, don't follow this. Don't follow that. Don't do this. Don't follow it. Go to their website and there's always going to be contributor guidelines. Within that page, it'll have exactly how they want you to send in your pitch. So don't follow this to newspapers or magazines if you're trying to contribute a story because they're going to have the contributor guidelines on their site. And if you don't follow them, it proves that you don't care and you didn't do your research. Before I end this video, you guys are going to be saying to me right now, but who am I pitching? Who should I be pitching? Everybody. You should be pitching everybody every single person that fits your brand as a photographer, your style as a photographer, you should be pitching. The general list of potential clients is unbelievably large. It can really be absolutely anybody. You can think of any product on the market and I'm sure there's a way for you to figure out a way that you could work that into your skill set. The most obvious brands are tourism boards. Tourism boards like the countries or provinces or states or municipalities and cities have money to buy photos. They want photos, they need photos to use in social media and their marketing in general. Tourism boards are huge clients for travel photographers, massive. Of course, you've got newspapers and magazines, editorial work, still relevant, it still exists, even though a lot of people don't chase it anymore because the money's not great there. And of course, you've got the commercial aspect of things. We're talking outdoor clothing brands. We're talking travel companies. Off the top of my head, think of like TripAdvisor or Expedia or Skyscanner or whoever else, airline. There's just so many companies involved with travel for you to pitch jobs to. And then on top of it, there's brands that have nothing to do with travel at all. I've done projects for Volkswagen, for example, American Express, for example. These brands will be interested in travel photography campaigns if you can capture something that sells their project in a good way. Before I end this video, I just wanna leave it with maybe a little bit of constructive criticism, I guess, or at least advice. And that bit of advice is to stop making excuses. People who are successful are those who go out and get what they want without waiting for somebody to show them how to do it. People that are willing to go out and just get what they want. And until you make that decision in your life to go out and get the projects you want, to grow your business the way you want to, it won't grow. I also wanna end this video with a bit of a challenge to you guys. The year my business started to really grow was the year I decided to take control of it from a business side of things. And I did that through a challenge to myself, the same one I'm giving to you guys right now. And that challenge was the 365 days of pitches. I sent a pitch 
365 days a year. And yeah, there was days I missed it, but then I just send two the next day. And that year, I've never felt so much denial in my entire life, so much rejection. And that's normal. In this industry and all industries, you're gonna get rejected 95% of the time. In fact, if you get rejected only 95% of the time and you're pitching 365 days in the year, you're gonna make a lot of money that year. You have to get over the rejection, you have to learn from the rejection, you have to figure out how you can fix things and adjust things so you don't get rejected so often. And you just got to move on and move forward and grow and take the good when you get it. You might get rejected 250 times in a row. That doesn't mean that the next project's not going to be a huge hitter that makes you enough money to last you the entire year. So if you're really interested in growing your photography business, if you feel like your photography skills are already at the level that you should be making money, then I issue you that challenge. Go out and send 365 days of pitches. And remember that in the description of this video, I've left you my template for my pitch. And it's simple, and it's not that confusing. And I just want you guys to take some of the lessons from this video, the things not to do, and the things to do in your pitches in account when you build your own pitch. And I wish you guys all the best. I really want to see your businesses grow as much as I want my own business to grow. And that's what this channel is here for. This channel is to help you guys grow or try to help you guys grow. Um, while at the same time, learning from my mistakes that I've made and learning from the things that I've done right. So I hope this video was helpful in that regard. I know it's a long video. I know that my writing is terrible and my drawing skills are even worse, but I, I hope it was helpful to you guys. And tomorrow I'm heading back to Madrid because I'm going to the Philippines and hopefully we'll make some money there. But if not, I'm traveling the world and I'm so excited about that. And this career is just awesome. So if you're interested in travel photography as a career, it can be a struggle, but it's worth it. It's worth every bit of struggle and so much more. Um, and yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that as my boy Forrest Gump says. So I'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace.